Thank you, thank you. Oh, you're, you're too kind. You're too kind, really. Um, so, uh, hi everybody. My name is Evan, and I am here to talk to you all about making your WordPress-powered website faster. And um, I stand here before you guys, and I want to start with a personal confession, okay? Um, I've been designing, developing, and consulting on websites for many years now, uh, but up until about two years ago or so, the websites that I were making, um, they were slow. And uh, that's not to say they moved at a snail's pace or anything like that, or I did anything purposeful to make them slow, but I was completely omitting any work in the performance optimization sector or category. And, you know, I was just like, I knew it mattered, but I, I come from a front end design and development background, and I was kind of like, hey, as long as the website looks the way I want it to, as long as there's not any major bugs, then, you know, if it takes an extra second to load, you know, whatever, it's probably fine. You know, like the internet is fast, right? And everybody has high speed connections. So what, what else? What else, dude? You know, but I stand here before you guys and I want to say I couldn't have been more wrong. And I'm here to tell you how to correct that problem. So um, for me, the correction started when a client actually called me out on this. And um, I had a client about two years ago, give or take. Uh, they sent me an email and they said, hey, Evan, I was running some speed tests on my website and I got such and such performance grade and uh, it had such and such recommendations to fix it and make it faster. And like, I don't really know what they mean. Can I pay you to help me? Can, is this something you could do? And uh, this is a good client. Um, and and I, I wrote him back and I was like, well, yeah, definitely. I could fix that. Thinking in the back of my mind now, like, oh, can I like, can I really do this? Uh, do I really know what I'm getting into? Um, but I was smart enough to tell him, well, hey, let me do some research first and get back to you about what is and isn't possible. And then we're going to get to the bottom of this. And the result of that one instance, uh, well, it was twofold. One, I made that website significantly faster and the client was one stoked dude. Uh, number two, it kickstarted a process of research and learning and immersion about the world of WordPress performance optimization. And like I said, that was about two years ago. Since then, I've been working on and honing a personal process that I now apply to every single website that I develop to make sure that it loads as quickly as possible. And that's what I want to share with you guys. And um, here's the most awesome part. It's, it's, uh, it's really not even that hard to do. Basically, what I'm going to show you it's a series of steps that I, I, like I said, I do it on every project that I take on. It's made to be efficient, it's made to be easy, and it's made to not get too technical or not get too crazy. I don't wanna, we're not gonna try to like solve, you know, like world peace and hunger with performance optimization. We're not gonna get to this meta level of detail. These are easy things anybody in this room could do to speed up your website, and that's what I wanna share with you. So, that being said, um, if you need some proof as to why, as to why you should actually care about this, because like I said, for the longest time, I didn't. I was just like, eh, whatever. Um, here are some cold hard facts. Uh, so you could read the first one, about 40% of people are going to abandon a website that takes three seconds or more to load. Um, that's kind of scary in itself, but I really like to focus on this middle one because let's say you are, let's say your website is selling a product. Or let's say you're trying to grow your audience and capture email addresses. Well, for every additional second that your website is taking to load, you could be costing yourself up to 7% in conversions. So that's like effectively 7% less sales, 7% fewer email addresses that you capture. Dude, you could speed that up and you could get that 7% back. And I'm here to show you how. Uh, finally, and this one, I would put this as kind of like a distant third, but Google has said that they use your website speed as a ranking signal in its search engine optimization or performance. So having a faster website is going to make your website rank better in Google. Don't get too concerned about that part because I think it's a very small ranking factor, but it's a factor nonetheless that Google has admitted, so we should all pay attention to it and be making our websites load as quickly as possible. Um, I'm not making this up. Sources are cited here. And by the way, all these slides are going to be, I'll tweet out the link. They're going to be posted on my website 
evanwebdesign.com. Um, so you, you'll be able to get all this stuff. And if you have questions, you'll be able to get at me after too. So um, here's our agenda. And here are some of the things we're going to be covering. Uh, we're going to talk about measuring speed. Like how do you actually know how fast or how slow your website is? We're going to go over that. Uh, we're going to talk about web hosting and why that's important and why that matters. And we couldn't have this discussion we're having without touching on caching. So you're going to get my take on that. Um, minification and concatenation. Those are two freaky, scary sounding words that a lot of people don't do. But you should, and it's totally not that scary. So we're going to cover that. Um, image optimization and gzip compression. We're going to go over those things. Those are steps in my own uh, uniquely patented, not really, uh, process. And we're going to talk about content delivery networks, um, CDNs. When you might want to use one, when maybe you don't necessarily need to use one, uh, and uh, what the heck they are, for those of you who, um, who are wondering. So uh, let's get right into it. This is where I start with all of my websites now. I want to measure the speed. I want to know how fast it is before I do any tweaks. Um, for that, I prefer these three tools. And I'm sure a lot of you here have used them or you've heard of them. And um, you, you kind of have an idea of how they work. Uh, my personal favorite is Pingdom. But you know, if you have a different favorite, that's totally cool. The important thing is you're getting a baseline metric that you could use to benchmark and compare any future uh, performance tweaks or enhancements against. Um, so if you run a test on, um, this is Pingdom, a screenshot of my own website being run. And I say, like, guys, this is not to like brag about my speed or anything. It's like, it could be faster. And that's kind of the point of all this. Like, your websites, when we're done with this process, could they be faster? Yeah. But are your efforts going to get diminishing returns? Totally. And we don't want that. We want to be quick and we want to be easy. So um, don't sweat your performance grade. You can see, like, I got a freaking B minus, but my website is pretty fast and I'm comfortable with it. So that's an A in my book. Um, what we're really concerned about are three things. Number one, uh, minimizing the amount of requests. A request is basically any asset on your web server that's shipped out to the visitor. So that could be like a PNG image, a JPEG, um, you know, HTML, CSS. Those are all assets that are being sent from the web server to the end visitor. And the fewer that the fewer the requests, the faster your website is going to load. Um, total page size. That's like how many gigabytes did your page take to load for all of those assets to be shipped over? We want to get that number down. And then if we do those two things, our loading time is most definitely going to decrease, uh, unless something super weird is happening. But um, by and large, that should go down. Um, these tests are going to give you so much more information uh, than this. And they're going to give you these weird encrypted recommendations for, for stuff to fix, like, oh, fix your render blocking HTML, render blocking JavaScript or whatever. Um, you can take action on those things, but I recommend you guys don't sweat it until you go through the steps that I'm going to outline, and then go back and fix what you have the time, patience, and energy and desire to do. Um, because you might find that some of those things just go away, and you're happy without even having to sweat it. So that being said, you know, take these tests, um, take them with a grain of salt, and just use them as kind of like a benchmark for comparison. So um, the first place we start is a um, quick sip of water here. Sorry. Um, OK. Oh, I, I think that had some citrus in it. That was nice. Um, so OK, sorry. Um, so dude, get yourself a good web host, all right? Like, if you're going to do one thing and nothing else, get yourself off of, if you're on a very inexpensive shared hosting environment, um, maybe get yourself off of that. Because in my experience, by and large, those speeds are going to be inconsistent and unreliable. So if you're on something like that, think about migrating elsewhere. Um, I have seen, and again, like the, I don't have the word of God or authority. There's plenty of smarter people, more experienced people than me, but I do have a lot of experience. In that experience, I have seen managed WordPress hosting environments perform with greater speeds and greater reliability on a consistent basis over, you know, like cheap shared hosting. So keep that in mind, and just know that if you're on like a, a cheap, inexpensive shared hosting environment. You could do all of these performance enhancements, and you might not see a huge difference because of things that are just outside of your control. So 
Um, you get what you pay for in the world of web hosting. So get a good host. This is like my pitch to you. Um, and, uh, and then finally, for those of you who are more like technically inclined and you kind of like tinkering with things, uh, a VPS hosting environment or like a dedicated virtual, something with dedicated resources that are specifically allocated to, um, to your own website that you're not sharing with anybody else, that's going to get you consistently fast and reliable speeds as well. So, you know, first things first, make sure you're comfortable with your web host from a, from a performance standpoint. Okay, um, caching. Uh, so I'm sure, uh, how many people here have used a caching plugin before? Dang, good, okay. Uh, how many people have, was it W3 Total Cache? Okay, a, a fair amount, okay. So um, caching is kind of weird and complex and shrouded in a lot of voodoo. And I, st like, I want you guys to know, I don't even fully understand everything about it. There's people here who know it way better than I do. But here's what I know. Using a caching plugin will make your website significantly faster, and it doesn't have to be that complex. Um, I'm afraid of these robust beasts like W3 Total Cache. Like, I've used it before. I thought it was confusing. I worried, even with my own level of skill and expertise and knowledge, I worried that like I was going to screw something up. Um, so I have two recommendations for you that are really pretty darn, and this is not, I'm not implying anything about this very, very intelligent audience, but these are pretty idiot proof plugins right here. And that's why I love them. And that's why I recommend them to my clients too. Um, there's uh, my personal favorite, my go-to these days is called Comet Cache. It's pretty much like a set it and forget it plugin. You turn it on, you activate it. And um, for like 95% of installs, it even says this when you activate it, like that's all you need to do. Um, there are some advanced configuration options for those are, who are interested and need um, a little bit more control, but most of you will not even have to touch those. Uh, Simple Cache is one I just found out about um, just like a week or two ago on WP Tavern. And um, I don't know if you guys read the Tavern, but you should, it's really good. Um, I, in full, full disclosure, I've not personally tested Simple Cache, but I really trust the reviewer who wrote about it and said, spoke highly of it on the Tavern. And I, it looks even more uh, simple and or like idiot proof than Comet Cache, so that might be a good option for you. Um, also, I told uh, Lucy Beer, who was like, we're competing against each other because she's speaking right now too, um, Rocket Cache, where, uh, where she works, I believe, that's another one I haven't tried, but I've heard really good things about. Uh, it is a premium plugin, I believe, but I think it's worth checking out if you're interested. Um, but the important thing is that you're caching somehow in some way. Um, and here's another place where if you're on one of those managed WordPress hosting platforms, you're going to get a built-in advantage because a lot of them, they do that for you with some type of ca a proprietary caching plugin or mechanism. So you won't even have to worry about it. But the important thing is that you're doing it, you're taking advantage of it, and if something weird happens, you could always deactivate one of these plugins and you'll be cool. You'll be set. Um, but what it's going to do, as we said here, rather than WordPress having to query the database, you know, grab that content, ship it back to the WordPress core files, have WordPress assemble your theme and your template and this and that, all that's going to be done and constructed in flat, static HTML ready to ship out to the user. That's what caching does. And that's why it makes your website faster. So bottom line, Make sure you're doing it, and um, make sure you're using a plugin you're comfortable with. It doesn't have to be one of these, but it's one of the steps in my process and one of the first ones. So um, to make things slightly confusing, but not really, now we're going to talk about browser caching, which is different than what a caching plugin will provide. Now, some robust caching plugins, they will have this option in there for you. I don't believe the ones I recommend do. Maybe Simple Cache does, but this one, Sounds and looks complex. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Uh, you don't even have to fully understand it, but if you copy and paste this code that I have right here into your HT access file, that's really all you need to do to take advantage of browser caching. And what browser caching does is it tells users to store the assets of your website on their local machine. So these users are not gonna have to download these assets from the web server on subsequent page visits. So basically, you're saving valuable time and bandwidth and the user is getting a faster experience because these assets are being pulled from a cache or temp directory right there on their own, um, on their own computer. And it's really as easy as copying and pasting this code into your HT access file. 
Um, I see a question back here. Oh, uh, so that's a good question. How different is this than expiration headers? Um, the, the answer is one that I have looked into and I don't fully, fully understand, but I know that in my experience, some things, what's, it, this is gonna set your expiration header, says Matt McInvale, who again, he's way smarter than me. He could probably be doing this in his sleep. Um, there you go, it's gonna set your expiration headers. And um, in my experience, I've had some things that are gonna set them automatically and some things that don't. Um, thank you, and this is jogging my memory on this. Um, I do this as a, blank, a blanket statement so I can make sure I'm setting the right expiration headers for the stuff that I wanna set. Um, but again, it's sort of like copy and paste if you're comfortable editing your HT access file, um, you do it and then you move on. Um, and every step in this process is meant to be pretty simple, like you do it and you move on. Um, minification and concatenation. These are the ones with the funny, kind of scary uh, sounding words that um, I don't see enough people taking advantage of. And this is one of the areas where I've seen the biggest performance gains. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with the concept, with concatenation, we're taking multiple CSS files that are loading and we're combining them into one single big old CSS file and um, shipping that to the user. That's gonna lower our number of requests. Remember, we wanted to get those requests as low or as few as possible. Um, we're gonna have fewer requests when we concatenate our files. Minification is taking that big old file and making it a mini minified file. We're eliminating the white space in the file, we're eliminating the line breaks, and we're making the file size as small as possible. So we're lowering requests and we're, send, we're shipping less data, and that's gonna result in a faster website. Um, it's, you know, it sounds complicated, but it doesn't have to be. These two plugins will do it for you. Um, one is an awesome one that I can't pronounce, so I'm just gonna butcher it. Autoptimize, I'm just, I'm just gonna call it Autoptimize from now on, and yes. Uh, so minification does matter. Well, my understanding is that minification, the question is, does minification matter if you're gzipping? We're going to get to gzipping, but my understanding is that it does. Um, but I could be wrong. I, again, I'm not a soup. Yes. I'm getting, I'm getting confirmation that, <laughs> that it does matter. So my understanding is correct. I am validated once again. Thank you. Um, so, um, Autoptimize is going to handle these things for you, and it's literally like you install this plugin, you activate it, and uh, what it's what it's going to do is set some default options for both minifying and concatenating your your CSS, your JavaScript, and if you want the HTML output of the page. Personally, I don't love to minify the HTML just because I like it to like look pretty when I view the source code. So I'll sacrifice like you know a few tiny bytes on that. You may feel differently, so you know at your own discretion, do what you're comfortable with. Um, for anybody that loves Comet Cache, the pro version of it has these op you know these options and this functionality built in. I've tried both; they both work awesome. And um, one really quick aside with um, that, you, like first of all, any type of trouble you get into with this process could easily be mitigated by simply deactivating the plugin. You're not gonna do any irreparable damage to your website by caching or concatenating or minifying your files, um, unless you do it like manually by hand or something really weird and crazy, but I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. Um, so uh, in a rare instance, you might get into some trouble with JavaScript being um, concatenated and minified because something is loading out of order or something weird. Um, in almost all the websites that I work on, I just roll with the default settings of auto-optimize and I'm cool and I'm fine. Sometimes a pesky JavaScript file needs to be excluded from the process of being concatenated and minified and that solves my problem. So for those of you who are a little bit more technically inclined and savvy, you could look through, you could turn this off if you're getting trouble you know, problems. You could look through your source code, track down the individual JavaScript files and start like excluding them one by one to see when the problem clears up. And then you know, aha, like that's the one I, I shouldn't mess with. I'll just sacrifice that performance gain and move on and I'll be cool. So um, again, that's not gonna happen to many of you, but I've been there before, um, almost like pulling my hair out. I'm like, okay, you know, 
I found it finally. So that's a potential gotcha. Um, next, we're going to talk about optimizing images. And this is one, um, again, I, I'm going to go ahead and admit, uh, this one did not come into my like, you know, super duper unique patented process until more recently. And that was just foolish of me because it's extremely easy to do. Uh, and I like a plugin called WP Smush, which I'm sure many of you here have heard of. But what the process does is, um, you know, when you normally upload images to your, um, to your WordPress website, they contain a lot of extra data that's just not necessary for the end user to, to load a nice image. There's, there's like information in the, in, the, in the image file. There's like pixel data that's not necessary. So what plugins, and there's many of these. I'm only putting the ones that I personally recommend. Um, so you may have another one you prefer. But what WP Smush does is it literally smushes your image as soon as it's uploaded um, and crunches it down, eliminates any type of extra data that's not necessary, and gives you a leaner, meaner image without any loss of quality. And in my experience, I notice, like on average, probably a like five to ten percent reduction in file size when I smush my images. And you know, like it, that might not seem like a lot, but think about it, dude. Like if you are loading ten images, it's like you got one for free. And when we're talking about sweating one second and seven percent of your sales potentially, you should be doing this. And it's easy. This plugin is like install it, activate it, set it, and forget it, and you're good. Um, there is a pro version of WP Smush. I have not personally used it, but if you're somebody who takes performance really seriously, there probably is some benefit and some value to be had there. Um, so check it out um, and at least use the free version or something similar. Okay, gzip compression. This is, again, this is as technical as we're going to get. This is another straight copy and paste into your HT access file. Um, so gzip compression came up a little prematurely, but uh, the concept is, um, it can be complex, but it's all like, it's a pretty simple one in theory. Um, you, know, you guys like zip up files on your local computer um, to, you know, to email to somebody or just to store an archive. And you notice like, hey, the zipped version of the file is smaller than like the unzipped version. Well, that's what we're doing with your website files. We're gzipping them on the web server. So they're zipped up and they, they, the, the total file size is smaller, we're sending them as a gzipped version through the interwebs, landing on the user's browser or phone or whatever, and being automatically or like almost like auto-magically, right? Like unzipped and displayed as a normal website. But the process yields a faster website because we're shipping less data. Um, so to take advantage of it, you simply need to copy and paste this code to your HT access file. Um, and also note that it requires the either mod gzip or mod deflate modules uh, in PHP to be enabled on your web server in order to function. Um, but in my experience, pretty much every single web server that I've worked on that is capable of hosting WordPress has had those things enabled. So if you're unsure, talk to your web host. But um, by and large, you should be covered here. Um, and it's again, it's like if you're comfortable with an HT access file edit, it's like two minutes, and you could see some significant performance gains because of it. Uh, because of it, and um, what about, oh, well here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh, getting ahead of myself. Uh, so I, I promised we would talk about content delivery networks. Um, so for those of you who who don't know, or you kind of know, or you, maybe you think you know, um, well, what they are is a series of web servers. Uh, located like either around the country or around the globe even uh, that host basically a duplicate version of your website and all of its assets. Now when a user requests your website, the web server in the closest geographic proximity to that user is going to be the one shipping out those web files. So what that results in is a faster loading site because the, the, the files are literally not transferring as far through like the internet to the end user. Um, so that's a good thing. And in theory, we should all be doing it, right? Because who doesn't want to ship their files from the closest geographic location possible? Um, there's a, there's a, there's a couple, re uh, well, a couple things to consider. Uh, and first and foremost, if your traffic is all targeted in one geographic region, you might not necessarily need to 
in, like have a content delivery network. Um, the, the servers in that network might not be that close or any closer than your regular web host to where you need to be. Uh, secondly, uh, it creates another point of failure and it could be kind of tricky to set up. Like I've set up a couple of these. Um, there's been times where I've run into a few weird gotchas or snafus that needed to be troubleshooted. And when something goes wrong, it's just another point to investigate. Like, oh, is it something with a CDN? Is it something with a server? Is it something with a CSS? So, you know, you're, you're basically making your hosting and, and, and website more complicated by doing so. But the benefit could totally be worth it if you, A, have visitors, like, in a wide geographic region around the country or around the world. Or B, if you have a really media-intensive site. So um, if you're ser serving up like a lot of images or a lot of um, streaming video or something, your website could see a great boost in performance by using a CDN. Um, most of them are not free, so keep that in mind as well. And make sure that if you're going to use one, it's the right fit for your website, your goals, uh, and what you're trying to accomplish. So um, a couple final tips. And I guess uh, I get like I could have started with these, but um, they're not as directly related to my like patented step of performance. So I kind of saved them as food for thought after. But um, use a fast and lightweight theme if at all possible. Uh, there's so many themes out there that are like bloated. They have a bunch of features and functionality that you don't necessarily take advantage of, but they could be loading scripts behind the scenes that are slowing down your website unnecessarily with no tangible, no real advantage to yourself, basically a disadvantage to everybody involved. So um, way easier said than done, but if possible, switch to a, a fast, lean and mean theme. And, uh, and finally, avoid unnecessary plugins. Um, and that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of vague, right? Like what's necessary, what's not? Well, that's up to you to decide. What are your goals? What are your requirements? What needs to happen with your website? Um, if a, plug, if a plugin is not helping you accomplish those goals, maybe you don't need to have it. And I'll say this, um, in my experience, be especially uh, wary of social sharing or social media plugins. I've seen those uh, slow down websites significantly without getting much user interaction or benefiting the user experience at all. So think about this, like a lot of my clients are like, oh, but we want pe people to be able to share this on Twitter, on Facebook or whatever. Um, but if it's making your website take a few extra seconds to load, you might get more engagement and more sharing by getting rid of it than keeping it in the first place. Um, another thing I like to do when I'm thinking about which plugins to cut, go back to that first screen where, where I had those three recommendations for uh, speed tests. Run a speed test, then go deactivate a few plugins. Go back and run another speed test. How much did your website speed up? Use that as like, a, you know, that, that's data. And that, you could use that data to make an informed decision about which plugins stay and which ones are going to be cut. So um, at this point, I, uh, I turn it over to, uh, to your questions. Uh, and uh, if we don't have enough time here, then we could, we could chat after. So we, how, how, much, how much time do we have for questions? Dang, we got 10 minutes. We got tons of time. Yes, I'll start right here. Okay, yeah. Oh man, okay, so she asked, no, that, that's a super good question actually. She asked that a lot of sites that she owns or manages are slowed down because of ads or Google Analytics. Do I have any advice on that? Um, this question is actually kind of near and dear to my heart because I was working on performance optimization for, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a, a, a shout out here, uh, Times of San Diego. It's a local news website that I, I help manage and maintain. Um, they publish good, cool articles. They have a ton of ads, and I was trying to help this site load as quickly as possible. And honestly, what it came down to is, unless we cut the ads, we're not going to speed anything up. It's like a catch-22, um, and you're really up against that. And the ads, unfortunately, they're kind of served randomly, and you don't know if it's going to be a high-bandwidth intensive ad coming up or not. So um, you just have to make that conscious choice, like how much money does it bring in versus how much does it alienate your user base? and then make an informed decision on like what stays and what goes. So, um, yes, uh, this gentleman right here. Okay. Sure, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, 
okay. Uh, okay, good question. So the, the question was in terms of like minification, concatenation, and image optimization, what's the benefit uh, of, um, of doing that with plugins on an actual WordPress installation versus doing it as you build the website using uh, preprocessors like, like Gulp or, um, or like there's, there, I, there's an app I have on my computer called Image Optim, I think that's what it's called, that will, yeah, that will um, crunch your images and basically do the same thing as like smush it like locally on your computer before you even upload them to WordPress. So I don't think there's much of an advantage either way. I think it's personal preference. But for me, this talk was meant to make these techniques accessible to people with who, like, for me personally, like, I've tried, like, the, the, the gulp thing or the, or the grunt or the whatever, you know, whatever it's called. And it, I, you know, like, and people hound me for this, but it, like, it didn't stick with me. It didn't resonate with me. It just felt like another abstraction. I'm, I'm removing myself even further from what I'm really making. So it's all personal preference, I believe. Oh yeah. Okay. So the um Right, yeah. And and so 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 the comment is like if you're doing that stuff before, you're not having extra scripts on the website, extra plugins and all of that potential baggage that might come with it. And I think that's more or less correct. Um but for me personally, my process is just that I, I do it on the website, on the web server, and I let those plugins handle that, even at the expense of like an extra byte or two. Um, but again, it's all personal preference. And if you're at the level of knowledge where you can do these preprocessors, um, then you're, you're probably already golden. My, my point was just to make sure you take all of these factors into, into, um, into play. Um, yes, gentlemen right here. Uh huh. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So if you have non-technical authors who are coming into your website, then um, yeah, this, this is another there's another advantage to be had by that. Um, okay, right here, and then uh, one more. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, I knew this was gonna come up. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. That would, yeah. So <laughs> I, I thought this question would come up. And this gentleman said, if you have W3 total cache, and it does like all of these things, or all of these things except for one, then you wouldn't want redundancy of having these plugins that do these, these features or these functionality. He's totally right. Um, you don't want to like, yeah. You don't want to have duplicate versions of these kinds of processes happening. If you're comfortable with W3 Total Cache, you could go in and you can activate all of those settings exactly to your liking, and you should. Do it. For me personally, my process is weird and unique and involved. It, you know, just like my own weird and unique brain. So this is the way it made sense for me, and I thought it might resonate with some people here. But yeah, yeah. No, it's. Yeah, so so it, I guess one takeaway from this, guys, is the tools don't matter as much as the ultimate result. So as long as you're caching, as long as you're minifying and concatenating, as long as you're squishing or smushing your images in some way, you're good. So there's there's tons of tools. I just picked my own personal favorites. Um, oh, five, five minutes. Okay, uh, in the back right here. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, good, uh, good questions on both of them. He asked, what are my recommendations for fast web hosts and what are my recommendations for CDNs? And I thought this question would come up as well. Um, out of respect to all the sponsors involved, if you see me after, I'll give you some of my personal recommendations and I'd be happy to. Uh, yes, question? Uh, no, I have not. I'm, I'm interested. So the question was, have I used something, a plugin, it's called P3? 
okay, to find which plugins on your website are slowing it down. Um, no, like, you know what? I actually haven't even heard of it, but it sounds like a cool tool. Um, and this is why we do WordCamps, because you guys could educate me just as much or more, honestly, than I could educate you. So um, it's a good one to check out. Yes. Okay. It's a, so it's a GoDaddy plugin. We have confirmation. Have you used it? Do you... Uh, interesting. Okay. So the comment was if, if you're on GoDaddy, they might want you to install and run this plugin to prove that like it's not them or it's the plugin or whatever. So interesting. Um, do we have time for more questions? Or? One more question. Uh, okay, uh, back here. Yes. Uh, good. Okay, uh, good question about the Smush It plugin. Is that only for new images uploaded or will it go back and crunch or smush all your past images? Um, it will go back, the free version will go back and it will do images that have already been uploaded in batches of 50 at a time. So um, if you have like 10,000 images, maybe get the pro version where I think it, with one click of one button, it'll do all of them. Um, but know that if you have patience and a low budget, you could use the free one too. So it really all depends on where you're at. Yeah. Um, okay. Are we, is that it for time? So cool. Thank you guys so much. You have all been awesome and I've learned from you. All right.